Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Lissa and today we're going to be going over cellulitis. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel. So let's get started. So what is cellulitis? So cellulitis is a common, potentially serious bacterial infection of the skin. Okay, so a bacterial infection of the skin, and it can be potentially serious. So it normally is swollen, inflamed, and typically painful, okay, warm to touch. Um, so cellulitis, it normally affects the lower limbs, but you can get it on your arms and your face, okay? So it's anywhere that there's a break in the skin and it allows the bacteria to get in. So normally we, like we all have bacteria on our skin constantly, okay? It's called our normal flora. Now, if we have a tiny break in the skin, these bacteria can get in and start wreaking havoc on our system. So if left untreated, it can spread to our lymph nodes and our blood system. This is where it becomes life-threatening, okay? It's not usually spread from person to person. So as you've seen on the thumbnail that you had clicked on, it was only one side that was affected. So cellulitis normally only occurs on one side of the body or the other, okay? Because it's a break in the skin that caused this infection. So it's an infection of the skin. So the signs and symptoms may include irritation of the skin that tends to expand. So it does spread quite quickly. There's swelling, there's tenderness, there's pain, there's warmth, there's fever, there's chills, spots, blistering, skin dumpling, okay? Um, when you get that really stretched skin and there's little dimples in it, okay? Those are all signs of cellulitis. So when do you need to see the doctor? So it is super, super important if you have an infection or a skin with these symptoms that you're being treated right away, okay? Because if you're treating it early, it prevents it from spreading any further, okay? Because it does spread quite rapidly and it can become an emergency situation. So you're going to seek emergency care if you have swollen, tender rash, um, or if it is like expanding very quickly and you have a fever, okay? seek a medical uh, emergency care immediately. Um, if you have the symptoms and you don't have a fever, but things are starting you know, to progress and you're noticing them, you should get treatment within the same day, okay? This is super, super important. This can become a major issue quite quickly. So if you have any of the symptoms, you want to be checked out within the day, okay? If you have the fever with it, though, you want to seek emergency care immediately. So what are the causes of cellulitis? So it's caused by bacteria, mostly streptococcus or staphylococcus, which is once again our normal flora. It enters through a crack or break in the skin. So it can happen anywhere on the body, but most commonly it is the lower legs, okay, because Bacteria are most likely to enter through the dry, flaky, swollen skin, and a lot of people have this, okay? So um, patients with edema or um, when, when they have a lot of swelling in their lower legs because their veins aren't working properly, this can be a major issue with them, okay? So when that um, leg is swelling, okay, it can, it stretches that skin and there's little micro um, openings in that skin. So I see this a lot with people who have untreated edema. So anytime I see someone with swollen legs, I'm like, hey, like you need to go get and, and talk to your doctor and see if you can get compression stockings, okay? If you have swelling, you should be in compression stockings unless your legs do not support it, okay? And then there's other ways to prevent the swelling, but compressions are our number one defense against swell, swollen legs, okay? And unless you have arterial disease with it, you can wear them. So if you have that swelling, 
talk to your doctor, okay? Because that is a great way to prevent um, the cellulitis, okay? Um, if you had a recent surgical site cut, puncture wound, ulcer, athlete's foot, uh, dermatitis, these are all other causes, okay? It allows whatever is going to allow bacteria in, okay? Any break in our natural defense, which is our skin, that lets the bacteria in can cause cellulitis. So risk factors. So once again, injury, any cut, fracture, burn, scrape, anything that allows a point of entry for bacteria is going to put you at risk. A weakened immune system. So patients with diabetes, leukemia, HIV, AIDS, are at risk of any infection, but it does put them also at risk for cellulitis. Um, any skin conditions, okay? Eczema, athlete's foot, shingles, okay? It allows this point of entry. Um, Long-term chronic swollen arms or legs, lymphedema, okay? Like I just said, with swelling, you, you want to be putting compression on them. Do not just put compression on without speaking to your doctor, though. We have to see if your legs or arms can support this. Um, if you've had a, a history of cellulitis, if you've had it once before, you are at higher risk of getting it again. Um, I've had so many patients in the past. I would get them just cleared up of a cellulitis infection, um, have them in compressions, optimizing their healing ability, okay? Get them completely optimized where they shouldn't get cellulitis again and they stop wearing their compressions, okay? Their legs shrunk and then they just stopped wearing it. They didn't have cellulitis when um, they didn't have cellulitis anymore, so they just stopped wearing them. Now, this, this is a preventative measure for life when you have swollen legs, okay? If it's a constant problem, then you should constantly be wearing your compressions while you're awake, okay? You take them off at night, um, you're laying flat, your body, the, the fluid will equalize. You should be wearing them. Compressions are something for life, okay? Once you're in them, it, it's almost, it, it's a, like a medicine without taking a medicine, okay? It's something that we're putting on us, okay, to help. Um, being overweight, so excess weight increases the risk of developing cellulitis. So complications, so like I said, this can be life-threatening, okay? So it may lead to bacteremia, so bacteria in the blood, um, endocarditis, so inflammation of the heart, osteomyelitis, infection in the bone, toxic shock syndrome, um, sepsis. Um, there are times where there it, it's rare, but the infection can spread to deeper layers of tissue. So this is called necrotizing fasciitis is an example of this deep layer infection. And it's an extreme emergency, okay? And so there are complications with this. That is why I said, if you notice signs and symptoms, you need to be seeing your healthcare professional immediately, okay? Um, recurrent episodes of cellulitis, it can damage lymphatic drainage system, okay? If we have lymph issues, we can get where our limbs are just swelling and staying chronically swollen, okay? Lymph edema, so swelling caused by our lymph system. So prevention. So if your cellulitis reoccurs, your healthcare provider, they can put you on a preventative antibiotic. So a lot of doctors do not like doing this. It's when it becomes a reoccurrent issue, okay? If you're having cellulitis and the benefits of being on a preventative antibiotic outweigh the negatives, okay? So it's not something that they're just going to do. It's when it's a recurrent issue. Um, now, preventative, make sure you're washing um, your, your limbs daily with soap and water. If you have a wound, okay, an open wound on the legs, 
that does need to be cleansed daily, okay? You want to be removing any bacteria, okay? Cleansing it very, very well. Um, protective ointment or creams, okay? You want to be doing this with or without a wound, okay? If you have dry, flaky skin, make sure that we're putting the ointments on. Um, cover any wounds with bandages, okay? This prevents any um, debris, bacteria from getting in. Watch for signs and symptoms of infection. Now, if you have a poor immune system, diabetes, you want to take extra precaution. So we should always be inspecting the feet daily with diabetes. Um, this will really be because we um, do tend to lose sense of feeling in the feet area with diabetes, okay? It is a complication of diabetes. So you already wanna be checking your feet daily, um, but then also looking for any wet redness, swelling, whatnot. Um, just moisturizing your skin regularly, trimming your fingers and toenails very cautiously. Um, I always suggest anyone with diabetes, they tend to get a really thick toenail, like toenails. They're really, really thick. So I always tell them, like, go see um, someone who specializes in doing nails, okay? So I know there are nurses who do this. Go and see them. Have your nails done, Um they, ha they have the tools to be able to deal with this appropriately. Um, protect your hands and feet, wear proper footwear, gloves, um, whatever activity you're doing, make sure you have the correct protection, okay? Um, and then if you notice any differences, get treated immediately. So how is cellulitis diagnosed? So more than likely, the doctor just has to really look at the location. Um, I know me personally, I just have to look at someone and I'm like, okay, yep, that's cellulitis. Uh, but sometimes they do undergo blood tests or other tests um, just to rule out other conditions. Um, but it is quite prominent. Um, when you see cellulitis, you know it's cellulitis. So treatment. So cellulitis, um, it usually you have to go on a prescription. So an oral antibiotic. Um, within three days of starting the antibiotic, you should let your health um, professional know whether it's working or not, how you're responding to the treatment. It usually takes five to 10 days um, to start really feeling better though. Um, symptoms typically disappear after a few days of starting treatment, but the leg will still be red and warm for quite some time. So make sure you're finishing the antibiotics. Um, you also may need to be hospitalized. Now I, I kind of say this in quotes because they do um, run IVs in home a lot now too. Uh, I know I'm kind of in a rural area so I did this a lot in my uh, job in the community. So when I was working in the community setting, um, I did I um, was doing chronic wounds. And a lot of times antibiotics come along with chronic wounds, um, especially when I was seeing them. So um, they, they do do this at home without having to stay in the hospital. Um, just depends on how they have it set up for you. Um, but a lot of times they'll put you in the hospital to stay there if sinus and symptoms are not responding to oral antibiotics, um, if your signs and symptoms are very extensive, or if you have a very high fever. So lifestyle and home remedies. So once again, this is something you're going to need an antibiotic for. Okay, you need it to be treated. So please don't try to just treat this at home. But these are things that you can do to help while on antibiotics, okay? You need to be on antibiotics also. Um, but there's pain because of the swelling a lot of the time. So placing a cool, damp cloth on the affected area as many times as you need to for your comfort. Okay, cool, damp cloth will help. Um, you can ask your doctor about a non-prescription pain medication, what you should be taking, okay? Um, elevate the part of the body with the cellulitis, okay? 
Um, anytime we elevate it, it will help reduce pressure so it's not pressure rate on that area, okay? And then just ask your healthcare professional whether compression wraps or stockings may help. Now, when people have an active cellulitis infection, they should not be wearing compressions, okay? I just want to make that clear. Unless the doctor is like, okay, it's we have you on an antibiotic. Let's get this cleared up. It is once the antibiotic is starting to work and it, and you can recognize that it's actually working, then that is the only time that we can put someone in compression wraps or stockings, okay? So just make sure that you're talking to your doctor about this. Um, I don't want... I don't know your medical history. I don't know exactly what's going on with you. So I can just give general information here. If you have cellulitis, do not be wearing compressions or stockings without talking to your healthcare professional, okay? So that is all that I have for this video. I hope it did give you a better understanding of cellulitis and how we treat it, prevent it, the causes. Um, but that's all I have for this video, guys. I hope to catch you in my next one. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.